Two, Skynet sent back through time a T-1000. T-1000 was an entirely liquid metal uh, organism that could transform into all sort of different shapes. In our movie, Skynet sends its latest design, which is actually a robot, but it's a robot that's covered with this liquid metal exterior, so she can change identities and morph into other people. Not only can she morph, she has that capability, but she can also um, control things, different machines, to um, program the way she wants them to. So that definitely gives her advantage in a lot of ways. Important for the director to make the audience know that this villain wasn't the same creature as in Terminator 2, that she had a combination of liquid metal and an internal endoskeleton armor that gave her a little bit more strength and power than we have seen before. So for the transformation shot, this was a good opportunity to showcase that. We have the liquid metal being sucked inside of the endoskeleton armor so that the audience is very clear that there is a difference here from what we've seen before. The liquid metal then comes back out to take her female form. It was a, uh, a very, very challenging shot of, of, of her, you know, going from uh, from Claire's boyfriend into, into the TX. There were lots of different uh, technical challenges. How in the heck are we gonna do this? There were a number of transformations that were done for Terminator 2, and the director asked us to reference those, but he really wanted us to push it further and, and provide something that was similar but new and original. We had a big R&D effort, mainly for all the things to do with the Terminatrix, the morph in the cemetery, and we knew that we needed to be able to control the liquid, and so we have uh, people from Stanford that work here with us and with our uh, CG supervisors. If you really want to do this and you want to make it interesting, you want to start probably behind the actor and you want to dolly around the actor and reveal that, that he's uh, that he's somebody else. I remember talking about this, this shot with the director and the director said, you know, uh, uh, Jonathan said, well, let's use motion control. How do you want me to, you want me to roll and then say moco? For me, I'd rather just say moco. That's, that's what okay. You get a, a huge, um, a huge machine, you know, with a camera on it that, uh, on a track that can repeat the move over and over and over. And the reason why you do that is because first you want to do the first move by itself with the background with nobody in it. Then you want to bring the, the first actor with the blue screen behind it and you want to do the same move. So, but with blue screen behind him. Then you want to do a pass with her on the blue screen doing the same thing and the camera is moving, and they're both walking, and the camera is also moving, and so you have to time everything. We needed both a model in the computer of the male actor, Scott, and the female actress, Kristana. These models then could be interchangeable. Their steps were timed as well as could be on location so that their movements would be as similar as possible. We then took those elements here at ILM and match the performance of each of the actors and then use that to drive the transformation between the male and the female. Mark, the, uh, the, the male uh, actor, was, was a lot shorter than Cristana. Cristana is, you know, six feet. So, uh, so we had to build some specific shoes so that they could be at the same level or else they couldn't morph. We've had to do a lot of different, you know, stickers for tracking markers, for visual effects and melting and that kind of stuff I haven't done before. Tracking markers were put along their clothing and along their faces to help as a guide to help match their performances later on. Uh, the green. Crystal's up. Uh, left, left of this line. Uh, we can walk right on the line. Right? Walk on. Okay. Because the 
match performances need to be especially tight for this transformation shot. We looked at it also in using this tune shader look that helped us really identify whether the silhouettes of each actor were lining up. Once we had the performances locked, we then applied animation on top of that to do the transition between the male and the female actors. Not only did the exterior silhouette have to transition, but the internal endoskeleton had to change form from the male proportions to the female proportions. And it also, it was difficult from a, uh, an art direction point of view. In other words, yes, he, he goes from, you know, from being a male to a female. Uh, we show the endoskeleton, but how does that get revealed? In addition to matching their body forms, we also had to match their clothing. You can see that Scott was wearing a sweatshirt and shorts while Kristana is wearing a leather jacket and pantsuit. So we had to transform not only their bodies but their clothing as well to make it an effective look. This was one of the most uh, lengthy shots on the show primarily because of the uh, attention to detail that matching the performances required. It probably took close to 10 months to fully achieve this shot. <laughs> At the, the time when we shot this, we didn't really know how they were going to transform into each other. But you want to have all the control. So what you want to do is you want to be able to separate every little element that goes into a shot. You want the background by itself, and you want the camera to do one move. You want him by himself, and you want to be able to extract him. That's why there's a blue right there. And if there's a problem, you want to be able to move him in and out. But if you have background right there and you haven't extracted him, then you, you can't do it. The visual effect is about us having all the control. Uh, and, and the only way to do that is to separate every little element. It's exciting for me to work on a Terminator movie. I was a big fan of Terminator 2 when it came out, and this was a golden opportunity to continue working on that saga. It's also a lot about the team that's involved in the project, from the director to the visual effects supervisor and all the team here at ILM was really came together to meet the challenges and provide some excellent work. And we've reached the point that there's almost, there's no rules left in movie making. It's, it's almost at the point of whatever you can imagine, so long as you have a suitcase full of cash, you can achieve it.